Hello book lovers! Today's episode is a close-up review of the gorgeous illustrated anniversary edition of the first book of Philip Pullman's His Dark Material series, which is published as Northern Lights in the UK and most other regions, but is called The Golden Compass in the United States. Links to the different editions and more information is below in the description box if you need them. This edition was brought out to celebrate the book's 25th anniversary, and it is really beautiful. I have the British edition published by Scholastic. As you can see here, it's a large oversized volume, around 11 inches or 30 centimetres tall, with a hidden alethiometer embossed in gold on blue boards under the dust jacket. It's a hybrid binding with the page sheaves fully stitched but glued to the backing along with the decorative braiding. The book is profusely illustrated throughout by Chris Wormel and almost all of the images were originally created as wood engravings that he carved and chiselled by hand and later coloured digitally. As a master of this technique he's able to use fine gradations of tone to create a beautiful sense of depth and dimension in the images. Every chapter has a bespoke heading illustration that usually takes an image from the first few paragraphs. For example, here we have Pan, who makes his first appearance in the book as a moth. You can see some of the incredibly fine detail in the illustrations in this close-up of the chapter title. The illustrations are plentiful and have been nicely added to make sure they match where they occur in the text. You can expect to see a half or a full page illustration almost every couple of pages. Many are quite dramatic and continue across double page spreads. Here's another heading featuring the Master's Demon, which is a raven. The digital colouring over the engraved lines combines so well in the book you can almost see the feathers shine. Philip Pullman has said he was inspired to write this story in response to John Milton's epic poem Paradise Lost, which tells the biblical story of Adam and Eve being tempted by Satan and banished from the Garden of Eden. Pullman's take on the story deals with the necessity of growing up and a refusal to lament the loss of innocence. Albeit one that features rather cooler demons, armoured polar bears and Zeppelin airships than Milton's original poem. Another classical work that's alluded to across Pullman's trilogy is William Blake's Songs of Innocence and Experience. In this collection of Blake's poems, innocence represents the unfallen world that we see in childhood vitality and lack of inhibition, while experience is the fallen world, marked by taking responsibility for your own decisions, involvement in spiritual and political corruption, and the loss of that state of innocence. Similarly, in Lyra's world, children whose demons have not yet settled are innocent because they have been spared the adult pains and responsibilities that come with experience, and this is why the dust is not attracted to them. The American title The Golden Compass is from a line from Milton's poem that Pullman originally used as the overarching title for his whole series. The golden compasses prepared in God's eternal store to circumscribe the universe and all created things. The American publishers assumed the phrase golden compasses referred to the alethiometer and they kept it for the book title even after Pullman advised them the title of the book was supposed to be Northern Lights.
The Aurora Borealis, or Northern Lights, that gave the book its British title, are beautifully represented in the illustrations in this edition. These shifting lights are intended to represent the thinnest part of the layers that separate different worlds, allowing people to pass between them. And I think that the mystical digital colouring contrasts beautifully with the more solidly etched lines of Lyra's world to manifest this idea. Some people have asked if there's a difference between the American and British editions of the of the book apart from the title and regional spelling differences. Well there's not much of a difference in this first book but there is a scene in the third book which was censored for American audiences, presumably because American publishers deemed it too sexual for a book they were marketing for children. As an adult reader you'd be able to infer what was happening in that scene anyway so it doesn't really change the story but I'll add the deleted text in the description box below for any American readers who are worried they might have missed out. All in all, this is a beautiful edition that I recommend for adults who love the series or as a special gift for a younger child who may not have yet read it. I'm very happy to say that the publishers have committed to producing the rest of the books in the series in a matching format. And in fact, the illustrator Chris Wamel has been documenting his illustration process for The Subtle Knife on his Instagram account, moving between sketch and engraving, and this is definitely worth checking out if you're interested. Links below as usual. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon with some more beautiful books for your personal library. If you'd like to chat in the comments below, I'd love to know what you think about this new trend towards publishing large illustrated gift editions. Personally, I love them because I think they add another special sensory element to the experience of reading. And I think these gift editions are usually more affordable than some of the fine press illustrated books. But I do think they can be a little unwieldy to read due to their size and weight. Till next time, bye.